Welcome back to an all new episode of One Foot in Front. I'm Faith McCann, and this week we're experiencing Koreatown, Los Angeles, where we'll indulge in some of my favorite dishes, check out a local hotel with a cool laid back vibe, and visit one of K Town's many malls that are becoming increasingly popular due to the rise of notoriety of Korean dramas, cuisine, culture, and music here in the West. So say, Annyeonghaseyo to Koreatown, Los Angeles. The 2.7 square miles we know as Koreatown today has historical ties back to the golden age of Hollywood, starting here with Chapman Market. Named for Charles Chapman, otherwise known as the Orange King of California, it opened in 1929 as a one-stop grocery store with accommodating cars in mind. Coming through this archway, some of LA's well-to-do and Hollywood stars could drive through and find an inner courtyard surrounded by various grocers. The Spanish colonial revival architecture from Morgan, Walls, and Clements was restored and renovated between 1989 and 1990 and now houses various restaurants offering Korean and Latin cuisine in the courtyard. A few streets over is where the real Hollywood glamour would have stayed and where presidential candidate Bobby Kennedy would spend his last hours alive. Opening in 1921, it was built alongside dirt roads and was the beginning of Wilshire Boulevard coming alive. Alongside its nightclub, the Coconut Grove, which housed everyone who was anyone, one of the many places to spring up was the Brown Derby. Today, the immediately recognizable Bowler Dome is in a shopping and dining plaza bearing its name, despite being the location that had less Hollywood starlet action compared to its famous sister, the Hollywood Brown Derby. Sadly, in 1980, the Derby closed up unexpectedly, and it took historians fighting to convince developers to preserve and restore the dome structure. The Ambassador Hotel was a thousand-room resort where Hollywood elite came to play to relax, as well as play to win. Among the hotel's various events held within the walls of its nightclub, the Coconut Grove, was the hosting of the Academy Awards, where, at the 12th Academy Awards, Gone with the Wind swept the nominations, including Best Picture, and where Hattie McDaniel made history as the first African-American to win an Oscar, and accepted her much-deserved recognition for supporting actress in none other than a segregated, no blacks hotel. It wouldn't be integrated until 19 years later. Koreatown's founding began at the decline of the Ambassador Hotel in 1960. By 1968, with the assassination of Robert F. Kennedy, the hotel had seen a rapid decline in interest, and it closed in 1989. Since its consecration in 1980, Koreatown has experienced its share of horrific events. Riots that threatened lives and businesses, nearly decimating the city altogether, is a glaring part of its history that has become synonymous with Koreatown. However, it was birthed out of more optimistic ideas. In 1968, Hai Duk Lee moved to the Los Angeles area with his wife-to-be. After seeing that the Koreans in the area had no place that felt reminiscent of Korea, Lee set his sights on creating spaces and places for his brethren. In 1971, he opened Olympic Market Grocery Store to provide many ingredients and foods known better in Korean dishes. After that, he set forth to create VIP Palace, a restaurant that was intended to be a gathering place for the Korean community. Much like other Asian American communities, Lee designed his buildings with Korean architecture, specifically showcasing blue roof tiles a sign of wealth and prosperity, imported directly from Korea. Today, VIP Palace still stands, blue roof tiles and all, as Gelagetsa Restaurant, featuring Oaxacan fare, famous for their mole sauce. As Korean businesses opened up and sprawled out locally, then-Mayor Tom Bradley made the Koreatown neighborhood official in 1980. Lee saw his dream come to fruition only so far. Lee sold his property in 1982. In 2016, Lee and his wife opened up a plant nursery, something according to his daughter Helen Lee was his passion, and it quote-unquote wasn't really a business to him. Sadly, in March of 2019, at the age of 79, 
Tai Duk Lee passed away from cancer. From the NBC News article about him, his son Roger Lee said in his eulogy, My father's life is a story of a true American. He took all the risks and dealt with all the consequences. Nevertheless, he did it his way. Today, we honor Mr. Lee and the Koreatown that is today because of his vision by visiting a local restaurant with one of my favorite dishes, tteokbokki. Tteokbokki is one of the most popular street dishes in Korea, sometimes served on a stick like kebabs. It's made up mainly of Korean rice cakes, fish cakes, dashi soup stock, and gochujang, or Korean chili paste. Fun fact about me, I am Caucasian specifically of Irish descent, and as you can surmise, I did not grow up on dishes with many spices or heat to them. Today was my first time trying authentic tteokbokki with full gochujang paste, and though I had to take a few more sips of my drink throughout the meal, it was even more delicious, even as I kept losing feeling in my lips. Just kidding. But it was something I needed to box up and take home because jokbok tteokbokki definitely gives you a hefty serving. So be prepared to go on an empty stomach or to have leftovers, which kept very well overnight. After filling up, let's recharge at one of Koreatown's coolest hotels, the Line Hotel LA. From the moment you step in the lobby, you get a sense of its unpretentious, relaxing nature, which is furthered by its plentiful foliage surrounding seating and lounge areas. The Line LA has ballroom spaces for special events, as well as an option to book a hotel room for your work from home needs that come with the benefit of pool and amenity usage throughout the day. Outside on the second floor, floor roof is their greenhouse restaurant called Open Air. With a two Michelin starred chef at their helm, Open Air, quote unquote, embraces each season and reflects the melting pot culture of LA. The staff was very friendly while they allowed me to film while they were setting up for the evening's festivities. I decided to head out to the pool where families were enjoying the warm weather and then went downstairs to check out the coffee bar provided by local coffee chain, Alfred. I ordered an iced vanilla latte to cool off. It was a nice atmosphere and I wouldn't mind visiting again for a staycation. And as a bonus for those traveling with pets, the Line Hotel LA is a pet-friendly hotel. After recharging with some caffeine, I made my way to Koreatown Plaza, one of the many indoor malls in Koreatown, showcasing everything from Korean skincare, fashion, furniture, as well as a wide variety of food options in the food court. Oh, and did I mention K-music? I myself am a fan of CL, Blackpink, and of course, BTS. But the K-music scene is so diverse, ranging from rap with artists like Epic High and Jay Park to jazz with artists like Na Yoon Soon. I'm a firm believer in music transcending language, so don't be intimidated to discover Korean artists simply because of the barrier. I also find that a simple Google search can reveal the English translations, and I can confidently say that they are some of the most beautiful lyrics I've ever read. Thank you so much for watching this episode of One Foot in Front with me, Faith McCann. And as always, if you keep one foot in front, you'll always be halfway to your next adventure. I'll see you next time.